In order to emphasise how important critical appraisal is and the kind of consequences that can occur when bad science is published, I will tell you a cautionary tale, one I'm sure you have heard about before. This study, published by Dr Andrew Wakefield and colleagues in The Lancet in 1998, reported on the observation of bowel symptoms in 12 children reported to have chronic enterocolitis and regressive development disorders. The study did not include any controls. The study conclusions suggested possible links between the gastrointestinal disease and development regression with the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine. When the paper was published in The Lancet on February 1998, the authors carried out press conferences to coincide with the publication, where it was suggested that single vaccines for measles, mumps and rubella might be preferable to a triple vaccine. From this moment onwards, the speculation of a causal link between the MMR vaccine, gastrointestinal disorders and autism was taken up and perpetuated quickly. This was despite the fact that examination of the original paper, including an associated commentary in the same journal, highlighted serious flaws in the paper and raised significant questions about how the data was collected, how cases were defined, if there was selection bias and if there was recall bias. Parents were asked in retrospect to recall events and time sequences of behavioural symptom onset and MMR administration. Very soon after publication, studies were published, some in the same journal, refuting evidence of a causal link, such as the study by Taylor et al. entitled Autism and Measles, Mumps and Rubella Vaccine, No Epidemiological Evidence for a Causal Association, published in The Lancet in June 1999. The media coverage did not reach its peak, however, until another paper, co-authored by Wakefield, was accepted for publication. This paper was entitled Potential Viral Pathogenic Mechanism for New Variant Inflammatory Bowel Disease, and the authors concluded that the data confirm an association between the presence of measles virus and gut pathology in children with developmental disorder. At this point, the press catches on, resulting in stories circulating of how harmful the MMR jab is. The media events have been examined by Tammy Spears and Justin Lewis in an article entitled Journalists and Jabs, Media Coverage of the MMR Vaccine. They conclude that in February 2002, two events brought the MMR vaccine into the British national news agenda. The BBC broadcast a panorama programme that raised doubts about the safety of the MMR vaccine. The programme was based on the paper co-authored by Wakefield, published in Molecular Pathology, a medical journal with a small circulation, which was eventually pre-published on the internet following demand after the panorama programme was aired. The following week, the media reported outbreaks of the measles virus, prompting questions about the take-up of MMR. The authors state that although this was not the first time the vaccine had been under media scrutiny, the spring 2002 controversy was, most conspicuously, the moment that threw the vaccine into the public spotlight. In 2003, in the height of the scare, figures showed that the MMR vaccine uptake rate in the UK had fallen to 78.9%, well below the 95% levels the World Health Organization recommends to maintain herd immunity. Investigations started to look into the role of the media in misleading the public. One study published in the British Medical Journal in 2003 looked at 561 media reports on MMR over a seven month period. More than half these stories were concentrated in one month between the 28th of January and the 28th of February 2002 and concluded that the media misled the public over the MMR vaccine. At the height of the media coverage, the impression was created that medical scientists were split down the middle over the vaccine safety, which was not in fact true. Less than one in four people were aware that the bulk of the evidence favoured the vaccine. To quote the study findings, almost all scientific experts rejected the claim of a link between MMR and autism. 53% of those surveyed at the height of the media coverage of the issue assumed that because both sides of the debate received equal media coverage, there must be equal evidence for each. Only 23% of the population were aware that the bulk of evidence favoured supporters of the vaccine, says the study. Simultaneously, there are investigations into the initial concerns raised when the study was first published, how the data was collected, 
how cases were defined if there was selection and recall bias. This led to some of the authors on the original paper providing a partial retraction, a retraction of interpretation about the causal link between MMR and autism. This was accompanied by the release of a statement from the journal editor. In their retraction, these authors stated, We wish to make it clear that in this paper, no causal link was established between MMR vaccine and autism, as the data were insufficient. However, the possibility of such a link was raised and consequent events have had major implications for public health. In view of this, we consider now is the appropriate time we should together formally retract the interpretation placed upon these findings in the paper, according to precedent. In 2004, UK TV Channel 4's Dispatches programme revealed Wakefield's single vaccine patent and that despite Wakefield's claims that the culprit for the diseases for the disorders is measles in MMR, i.e. to justify suspension of the triple MMR vaccine in favour of single vaccines, the molecular tests in his laboratory found no trace of the virus. In April 2006, tragically the first death in the UK from measles in 14 years is reported, a 13-year-old boy. Measles cases in England and Wales rose sharply in 2008 culminating in the large measles outbreak in 2008 and in 2009. The UK Health Protection Agency attributed these measles outbreaks to a concurrent drop in the number of children receiving the MMR vaccine. However, the controversy surrounding Wakefield's potential conflicts of interest and the validity of his research continued. In 2010, a series of hearings led to Wakefield being found guilty of dishonesty and irresponsibility by the UK's regulatory body, the General Medical Council. They found that Dr Wakefield abused his position, subjected children to intrusive procedures such as lumbar puncture and colonoscopy that were not clinically indicated, carried out research which flouted the conditions of ethics committee approval and brought the medical profession into disrepute. He had failed to disclose to The Lancet that the study had received funding from the Legal Aid Board through a solicitor who hoped to mount a legal action against the MMR vaccine manufacturer and that he had also filed a patent application for a new vaccine. He had also dishonestly represented that the children in the paper had come through GPs or paediatricians by the standard route. He was also found guilty of a callous disregard for the distress and pain of children who had blood samples taken from them at his son's birthday party and were paid £5 each. Following this UK General Medical Council judgment in January 2010, The Lancet fully retracted the paper from the published record, after concluding that several elements of the original Wakefield 1998 paper were incorrect, in particular the claims in the original paper that children were consecutively referred and that investigations were approved by the Local Ethics Committee have been proven to be false. Finally, in May 2010, Andrew Wakefield was struck off the medical register by the General Medical Council. And the background to the full extent of Wakefield's fraud, including the fact that the data for the 1998 Lancet paper had been substantially misrepresented in order to give the result Wakefield needed, was then published in a series of articles in the British Medical Journal by Brian Deere, the investigative journalist who discovered them. Eight years on from those events and revelations, the legacy lives on with high quality evidence emerging that the low rates of MMR have led to increases in cases of measles, mumps and rubella globally and subsequent deaths and life-changing disability as published in the WHO news release 29th of November 2018 entitled Measles Cases Spike Globally Due to Gaps in Vaccination Coverage. Moving to more current times, despite the fact that millions of dollars have been spent on additional studies to validate or disqualify the original Wakefield study, no evidence has yet been found on an association between MMR and autism. In fact, the opposite. Wakefield is still spreading his message as science and he has a following including public speaking and YouTube videos. The impact of the original paper still continues, as described in this article within the Times in February 2019, entitled Irish Mumps Outbreak May Be Linked to MMR Scare in 1990s. This sequence of events from 1998 onwards have impacted on the public willingness to comply with other vaccinations. As such, the WHO lists vaccine hesitancy as one of the 10 threats to global health in 2019. 
This tale can perhaps be summed up by a quote from Hoof et al. The ultimate defence against fake facts is the capacity of each individual to examine critically the information on offer and to reach judgment about its trustworthiness that is based on evidence and reasoning.